This is Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Cougar Post Game Live is brought to you by Big O Tires. Stop by your locally owned and operated Big O Tires, the team you trust. Cougar Post Game Live is also brought to you by Delta, official airline of the BYU men's basketball team. Here's your host, Ben Bagley. And welcome into Cougar Post Game Live, presented by Big O Tires. Stop by your locally owned and operated Big O Tires, the team you trust. BYU falls today in Manhattan, Kansas, by 10, 84-74. You heard Greg and Mark just go over some stats that matter. Here's a couple of things that I'd like to add to that. Obviously, the 19.4% from three, six for 31 for BYU. 62.5% from the free throw line going 10 of 16. That's a lot of misses from those two areas of the floor. And when you're missing that much, when you're only shooting 19.4 from three and 62% from the free throw line, that's going to be hard to win some games. Some three three BYU player stat lines that jump out and not in a good way in this game. Jackson Robinson did lead BYU with 15 points, but that may be deceiving as Robinson was 7 for 17 from the field. And a woeful one of nine from three. So Jackson got some points, but uh, came on uh, 17 shots when you're hitting 15 points with 17 sh- shot attempts. Not a great great way to look at it. Down Hall only three points on one of ten from the field. And Dallin Hall, Trevin Nell, and Ali Khalifa combining for an 0 for 9 performance from beyond the arc uh, this this early afternoon in Manhattan, Kansas, and all that equals up to a 10-point loss, 84-74. to Kansas State gets the victory. They move to 6-8 and on Big 12 play and 16-11 and overall. BYU now uh, drops back to 500 at 7-7 seven and seven in Big 12 play, 19-8 and overall on the season. All that said, BYU still in really good shape in getting an NCAA tournament bid and a nice seating into the Big 12 conference coming up next month in Kansas City. Taking a look at the Big 12 scoreboard, talked about it at halftime, talked about it again today, a really crazy game this morning in Waco. Second-rate Houston travels to take on Baylor. Uh, Houston gets a 41-25 lead going into halftime, but Baylor comes out of the break, scoring 10 straight out of the halftime locker room and outscoring Bay, uh, outscoring Houston 44-28. Sending the game into overtime after Eve Meese for Baylor missed a potential game-winning free throw. Uh, the Cougars, Houston Cougars, hit a shot at the buzzer. It was deemed after the buzzer, therefore, overtime. And in OT, the Houston Cougars get the 82-76 win. Emmanuel Sharp leads Houston with 18 points. Juwan Roberts has 17 points on and eight rebounds and four assists in the win. He shot 77.8 from the field on seven for nine shooting. So a nice job by Juwan Roberts in leading Houston in that game. Jacoby Walter had 23 points for Baylor in the loss. One other final uh, in the Big 12, sixth-ranked Iowa State outlast West Virginia. Uh, Iowa State at home on that one, getting the 71-64 home win. Taman Lipsy, 14.6 assists for the Cyclones. Games in action in the Big 12 right now. 11:31 left in the second half. It's TCU at home, up 57-44 on Cincinnati. Nine minutes left in the first half. It's UCF holding serve at home right now, 20 to 17. They're up on 23rd ranked Texas Tech in a in a home game there in Orlando in the Bedlam series, Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. This one in Stillwater, 2016 Oklahoma State leading right now over Oklahoma. Coming up later tonight, 4 p.m. tip, number nine, Kansas hosts Texas. That's your big look at what you what you can expect in the Big 12 coming up throughout the day. Coming up next, we'll get you some big top 25 scores and look at a couple of other stats from tonight's game. BYU coming out on the short end of the stick at in Manhattan, Kansas, BYU Falls, 84-74. More Cougar Post Game Live comes your way next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Ben Bagley with more Big O Tires Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to Cougar Post Game Live, presented by Big O Tires. BYU falls to Kansas State, 84-74 on the road. 
BYU shooting two for 15 from three in the second half, only 13.3% from beyond the arc in the second half for BYU. Uh, thus, the downfall of the Cougars at the Wildcats today in Manhattan, te- uh, Manhattan, Kansas. Taking a look at the top 25 scoreboard finals from earlier today. 24th-ranked Florida holds serve at home in the SEC. The 74-64 win over Vanderbilt in the Pac-10. Taking a look at fourth-ranked Arizona beating handily Washington 91-75. The Wildcats get the win at home. Upset alert in the ACC. Not an alert. It actually happened. Wake Forest gets an 83-79 win over eighth-ranked Duke. And in the Big Ten, 12th-ranked Illinois gets a 95-85 10-point victory over Iowa. Games in action right now in the top 25. Back to the SEC where 20th-ranked South Carolina on the road at Ole Miss has a 36-22 halftime lead. 10th-ranked Carolina, North Carolina at Virginia. That game early on, seven minutes left in the first half, 14-6 low-scoring affair uh, there in at Virginia. A top 25 matchup in the SEC, and it's living up to its billing with 10, 11 minutes left in the first half. 17th-ranked Kentucky has a 25-24 lead on 13th-ranked Alabama. An update on the uh, the Texas Tech-UCF score with seven minutes left in the first half. Uh, UCF still leading 25-21. On 23rd-ranked Texas Tech, couple of top 25 games to watch for later on tonight. 14th-ranked Auburn at Georgia. Villanova on the road against top-ranked UConn, Texas A&M. Travels to 5th-ranked ten- Tennessee. Uh, back here to the West Coast, you get 21st-ranked Washington State at Arizona State. 23rd-ranked Colorado State at UNLV. As well as San Diego at 18th-ranked St. Mary's. 19th-ranked San Diego State at Fresno. All these games coming up later uh, today. After the break, we'll send you back to Manhattan, Kansas with Mark and Greg for more Cougar Post Game Live. BYU Falls today in Manhattan, Kansas, 84-74. You heard it here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Greg Rubel with more Big O Tires Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Final score 84 74, K State over BYU in a game the Cougars never led. BYU falls to 7 and 7 in league and 19 and 8 overall. Next up, Kansas Jayhawks on Tuesday at Fog Allen Fieldhouse. Well, I'm sure it was a game K-State felt they just had to have, having lost to 7 of 8. And Coach Malagy in the pregame, their assistant coach, talked about, you know, being that team that gets a little bit hot down the stretch, find something positive to go into KC with. And this is certainly that game for K- K-State. They now, after defeating BYU, host West Virginia. And that's a game you expect to win on the back end of that. So then you go, well, now we've won two in a row. Then they go to Cincy. Well, since you just lost to, to Oklahoma State, you go, oh, we, we, may, we may win three in a row. You know, they're thinking they're, they're going to be this team that gets uh, on a bit of a run down the stretch. So big step for them today and a step back for BYU, no doubt. Let's take it to the Waystar, star of the game here on the Big O Tires Cougar Post Game Show. Brought to you by Waystar. Waystar, simplifying health care payments. Learn more at waystar.com. Really liked the way Richie Saunders played against Baylor in the midweek win on Tuesday, and he carried on a strong play today. I thought Richie was tremendous. 11 points, 6 rebounds, 2 assists, 3 steals in 20 minutes of play. Uh, Richie Saunders is our way star, star of the game. Richie will hustle for you, make plays for you. And They weren't winning plays today as the Cougars fall by 10, but he gives you what you want a guy like that to provide. And Richie Saunders, I think, will be our star of the game today. Of every any player out there, uh, if I'm going to tell a, a young kid how to play, I say watch Richie Saunders. That's how you play. That's how hard you play. And he, there, like I said, there's no off switch for Richie. And uh, he's so crafty around the basket, doing a lot of things, and has become a real uh, threat to score in the paint. And it, just a nice job from Richie. So Richie Saunders is our way star, star of the game. Here today, K-State scored 42 in the first half and 42 in the second half. And both the first halves and second half started the same way, unfortunately, for BYU. Uh, Half number one opened with K-State scoring the first eight points of the game. It was 8-0 before BYU scored. And in the second half, K-State takes its four-point halftime lead and uh, pushed it to uh, to nine pretty quickly, scoring the first five. And... uh, 
ended up scoring, uh, let's see, outscored BYU 40. It was 49-40 to 40 after a halftime lead. And so, yeah, 7-2 to two in the first couple minutes of the second half. So 8 nothing first half, 7-2 second half. Strong starts to either half for K-State as they hold on for the win today, 84-74. All right, we'll come back and hear from head coach Mark Pope on the BYU Creamery Cougar Post Game Coaches Show. Wildcats 84, BYU 74 is our final score on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to the BYU Creamery Cougar Post Game Coaches Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now, back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU Creamery Cougar Post Game Coaches Show begins live from Bramlage Coliseum here in Manhattan, Kansas. What do they have for a crowd number today? 9,117. So uh, not not a sellout. Seats 11,000. But, man, that's a loud 9,000 plus here today in Manhattan. All right, let's, uh, before we hear from head coach Mark Pope, who will join us momentarily, let's get to our economics partner's valuable stat of the game. BYU's accounting program is nationally ranked. So it's no surprise one of the nation's top business valuation firms is run by diehard BYU fans. Need a valuation? for your business, go to econpartners.com. Okay, here's something for you, folks. BYU, coming into today, was 7th nationally. 7th nationally in two-point percentage at 58%. Guess what BYU shot today from two? 58%. So BYU had a typical two-point day, which is a great two-point team. Mark, it literally, it all came down to three-point shooting today. Yeah, if, if you take out the three-point shooting percentage numbers and then you look at the the score sheet the rebounding turnovers uh, a lot of good things maybe not free throw shooting that Kansas State shot a lot of free throws in this game but you think BYU's got a really good chance of of winning this game and that shows you how important the three-point shot is to this team they don't necessarily you know live or die by it but man if you're shooting under 20 percent any team is going to probably die by the three BYU coming into the day had taken more threes than twos on the year. Today, BYU took more twos than threes, as it turned out. So a rare day that way, as they, BYU took 40 <laughs> twos to 31 threes. And they took a ton of shots. They, they, they took 20, uh, what, what 23, 23 more. more shots than Kansas State. That, that's, and made how many more? Two. Uh, two, yeah. That's, took took uh, 23 more field goal attempts than K-State to make two more field goals. So. I, I feel better about this loss, I guess, than Oklahoma State. I just didn't feel like BYU played in general well against Oklahoma State, but I felt like the effort was there. They, they played, they did a lot of good things today, but they just couldn't make shots. Well, uh, certainly a step back for BYU after a resounding win over Baylor, and this may take BYU out of the top 25 for the first time in 14 weeks. I said, normally you get a split week in the Big 12, you're doing pretty well, and they beat a ranked Baylor team on Tuesday, but these Saturday games coming as they do against the lower-tier teams tend to have a bit of an impact, and you're already hanging on. You're at 25 in AP coming into this week, so it just may, may be that BYU dips out of the AP poll. They're 21st in the coaches' poll, so we'll see what 1-1 one one does for BYU this week. But, hey, this is a uh, case 18 that had lost 7 of 8, and they were gettable, right, Mark? And and uh, and, and really not never never gave K-State re- reason to worry today. No leads for BYU in this one. Well, K-State, you know, it's surprising because they, they've got some super players. I mean, Perry and Kaluma. Uh, Carter's 15 Carter, a game. Carter's very good. So they, it, it's, they've got good players. And like I said before, in this building, they beat Kansas. They beat Baylor. I mean, yeah. certainly a capable team. I mean, I was thinking about this, you know, going into the conference tournament. I'm like, who do I want to play in the conference? I don't want to play anybody. You can, you can look at every team and go, well, that would be a problem. This would be a problem. West Virginia, maybe. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so I mean, it's 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 a, we all knew all along it's going to be tough. You're going to drop games like this, but it was frustrating. BYU should be better from the three, and they would have been in this game, would have had a chance uh, if they shot better from the three. They didn't. They were out of it. And but now you've got with with the, with this conference brings opportunity, and now you've got a great opportunity to go and uh, get get a win you're not supposed to. You got a loss you probably shouldn't have, and now you get a win you're you're not supposed to on the road. In Kansas, as good as they are, especially at home. Is, is not in, invincible this year like they maybe have been in years past. So it's a great opportunity. You go out and, and, and knock down some threes in that game, and you'll have a chance. 
And you liked uh, BYU's effort today a bit better than Oklahoma State, but uh, they were really similar games in a lot of ways. Uh, in both games, BYU was down 8 nothing early, kind of shell shock, missed their first bunch of threes. Last late week, BYU went 8 for 35 from the arc today. It was 6 for 31. So basically the same game and a little worse from the three-point line for BYU today. So that was the formula in both L's in Stillwater and today in Manhattan. We'll take a break, return to courtside. Head coach Mark Pope still to come. Final score, 84-74. Wildcats over the Cougars in this Saturday matinee cat fight on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to the BYU Creamery Cougar Postgame Coaches Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now, back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, uh, BYU falls to 0-3 all-time in Manhattan. So BYU 0-3 at K-State. K-State's a winner today, 84-74 over the Cougars at Bramlage Coliseum. Cougars also fall to 1-4 this year when trailing at halftime. BYU has just one win when behind at the break. That was against NC State in Las Vegas earlier in this year. And if it doesn't happen in the first 35 minutes, it's not going to happen for BYU this year. The Cougs are now 19-0 and when leading at the five-minute-to-go mark and 0-8 and when trailing at the five-minute-to-go mark. BYU tried to give us some hope late, but uh, never could quite uh, seriously threaten the Wildcats in the closing moments. And K-State goes on to win it by 10. And so the up-and-down life of the Big 12 continues for BYU. BYU's not lost three in a row at any point, has not won three in a row at any point. A win, a loss, a couple wins, a couple losses, kind of bouncing around. And uh, it's life in the Big 12, a big win over Baylor midweek with a tough loss to K-State, a team that had been struggling on the weekend. I can't stress, Greg, how important the first few minutes are in a game like this in Oklahoma State. And, you know, in, in kind of the bigger, bigger name games that BYU's played on the road, they've been ready to go right off the bat and set a tone. You set a tone in the first couple of minutes, and you have to just be – razor sharp and physical and get after it in the first couple minutes so then you're sending a message to Kansas State this isn't going to be the night that you break out of your slump Uh, this is going to be a tough night for you we're we're here we're going to make your life miserable and when a team like K-State or Oklahoma State doesn't feel that or they get an open three and knock down their first couple threes it's a completely different tone you've said, a mindset you've said. They're thinking this is our night. We, we, this is the one we're going to get. We're at home. We're, we're feeling it. And, and you put yourself uh, in a tough situation. So I, I guess the, the whole point of that conversation is just to have that knowledge in your mind that those first couple of possessions are so important and really be at the top of your game and super focused, especially defensively, so that that does not happen to you. We need to reiterate as well, uh, the Big 12 is the third best home league in America. Of the 32 conferences, the third best win percentage at home belongs to Big 12 conference teams. And among power conferences, they're second best only to uh, the Big 10. So, you know, roughly seven of every 10 games in this league are won by the home team. And, uh, and, and, and K-State was the home team today. And Kelvin Sampson famously said already this year, Go on the road, there are no upsets. Uh, home teams are good in this league. And even though, you know, K-State uh, had lost 7 of 8, this is still a team that was uh, on the year 12-3 and three in this building and now 5-2 and two in Big 12 play on this floor. Got great arenas, and they're, they're usually pretty full. And so you got the crowd behind you, and it makes a big difference. There's no bigger home court advantage than in basketball. I mean, it, it makes a big difference. And so that's tough. But what I have liked about BYU up until these last two is – that hasn't seemed to matter early. They, they've come out and really gotten after it. They've had leads. They've had leads in the second half. But the, the frustrating part of the last two road games uh, is that BYU has gotten down early, and they have not been in the lead the entire game, which is a little bit disappointed with how well they had handled kind of the arenas. And I know they let some leads slip away, but it's very difficult to get, to get a lead on the road in this league. And BYU's been able to do that until recently. It's also difficult to shoot and score against K-State. Let's also note these facts. K-State is the best defensive team in the Big 12 in conference play. All right, they just are. They, they lead in, in field goal percentage defense, in three-point percentage defense, they're second in defensive efficiency. They're third in scoring defense. This now makes it 20 consecutive games that an opponent hasn't gotten to 45% field goals against 
K-State. BYU shot 41 today. So 20 consecutive games at that number. 13 of the last 14. A team's been under 35 from three. And BYU today was under 20 from three. And it's now 16 straight games. A team hasn't gotten to 10 threes in a game. So all those numbers uh, bear noting in this game today, 84-74. The defensive prowess is upheld, and K-State wins for the second time in its last nine games. Coach Mark Pope coming up next on the BYU Creamery Cougar Post Game Coaches Show. You're listening to the BYU Creamery Cougar Post Game Coaches Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now, back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, so welcome back courtside here to Bramlage Coliseum in Manhattan, Kansas. K-State defeats BYU by a score of 84-74 to today. Cougars will next to be at Kansas on Tuesday night. K-State the winner today. Head coach Mark Pope with us now on the BYU Creamery Cougar Post Game Coaches Show. Uh, coach, some time to sit and let this one uh, settle with you a little bit. Um, Post game summation on your standpoint. Well, uh, yeah, I mean a lot. We didn't start great um, on the defense band, and and they made a couple tough shots. And uh, I thought the guys did a great job, uh, kind of battling that to just be, essentially be tied at halftime. And then um, you know it was just the you know uh, we didn't guard them great from the three in terms of percentage. Uh, we didn't guard the free throw line very well tonight. That was uh, it was pretty frustrating, um, and then we just didn't have any answers for Arthur Kaluma, and so that was that was problematic. I loved our guys' effort. You know, to be a 19 offensive rebound team on the road is, is super impressive in terms of our guys' energy. Um, you know, we, we we protected the ball with only eight turnovers on the road, which I was very pleased with. Um, but at the end of the day, we just we just couldn't handle those issues, and we didn't shoot the ball quite well enough to come away with the win with all the other things that, that were little holes for us. Yeah, a couple of difficult uh, three-point days, your last two road games last Saturday and today. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that go into that. Um, like we said, uh, you know, you offset with the 19 offensive rebounds, and you feel good about it, but there were just too many other things. At the end of the day, you know, giving up 42 points a half is, is problematic for us, and and letting a guy, you know, be 8 for 11 uh, was problematic for us. This Arthur Kaluma was really special tonight, and we just didn't have an answer for him. And, and, um, and you know, it's, um, it's life on the road in the Big 12 is, is complicated, and, and we just have to play a little bit. You know, we have to play better, certainly. Uh, you know, um, and, and we can and we will. We, we didn't tonight. Coach, you're facing some teams now for the second time. What are the challenges in, in playing a team a second time? Um, well, I actually love it because we know each other better and everybody's uh, making adjustments. And, and um, um, you know, I, I've, uh, I felt like, our, our, you know, it, it just makes it more interesting. You know, the, the ultimate is, you know, these seven-game series in the NBA are so fun because you you just um, you go back and forth. So we just get a little tiny little slice of that here. Uh, the proximity of the two games is pretty fun. It's only been a couple weeks. So um, uh, I, I like the second time around a lot. Do you like the the either the response or the resiliency aspect of this team? It seems like once you take a hit, you're you're you're, you're good at bouncing back from that. And so I, I look forward to Tuesday and think about maybe what might be in store for you. Right, yeah, I mean that's the DNA of this team. Like we have unbelievable young men, and they compete hard, and and uh, they're fighting, and they're in the midst of an incredible season. And this league is hard, and and. Um, and, you know, we're, we're, we're good and we have to get better. And, and um, our guys do that. Our guys are really passionate about trying to grow. And and, um, and so, you know, the expectation is that, you know, we'll, um, we'll you know, work through this, uh, you know, over the next minutes and hours and days. And then, and then you know, we have an unbelievable, you know, we come back to Kansas. So um, it's, it's the beauty of this league, and, and, and uh, our guys are great that way, and it's one of the real blessings of coaching this team. Talked about it with our listeners a moment ago, but this K-State team's now 13-3 and three at home, including a 5-2 and two mark in league, and that the Big 12 is the third best home conference in the country. Uh, it's, it's all around the league. Home games are incredibly, well, road games are incredibly hard to win in this conference. Yeah, and we had our chances. Um, you know, we just, you, you know, you, you just ha- we have to play better. If we're going to win on the road, we just have to play better than we played tonight. It doesn't have anything to do with us, you know, being a good team or not a good team. We just have to play better. Uh, we got to shoot it better for the free throw line. We got to we got to be more efficient, uh, making shots from the field, and we got to we got to have better answers for uh, guys that are having big nights. And and you have to do that on the road to to win. And we didn't do it tonight, and 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 that's where we are. So um, it's um, 
you know, I, I love our guys, of course, and, and they're taking us on an epic ride uh, this year, and this was a frustrating night in that epic ride. I'm sure it's frustrating as a coach. The one thing you necessarily can't control is, is guys making shots, and uh, and you're going to have off nights, obviously. But what do you look for as a coach rather than say just keep shooting and, and, and be confident, but what can you do as a coach and your team to get the shots that you want to give you the best opportunity were you getting those shots tonight or? yeah we, we, we i actually liked i liked the way we were functioning tonight a lot i actually liked it a lot um i thought and, and like i said our answer is the offensive glass and and uh and and the guys were brilliant with their effort on the offensive glass i don't know how many teams are putting up 19 offensive rebounds a game i don't i don't, I don't know it'd be interesting to look at the stat but i would guess it's not very many and that's just desire and want to and commitment and effort and so um i like that uh you know, I thought our ball movement was fine tonight. I thought we were on our heels to start the game a little bit. Um, but I feel like we responded well in the second 10 minutes of the half. Um, you know, for us right now, uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually, you know, we, we, on both sides of the ball, we just needed to be a little bit better tonight. And, and we weren't quite good enough on either side of the ball to get a win. So how do you plan to handle the break between the K-State and the KU game relative we're, to what you want to do? We're going to jump on a plane right now. We'll go home. Uh, we, you know, we'll do as much of a debrief as the NCAA allows us to do. Um, and uh, Spence will race home and, and see his son, and probably the whole team will go see him and, and uh, when we can. And then, and then we'll um, have a, a – um, spiritual day tomorrow and and um, and then a full prep day uh, Monday morning, jump on a plane Monday and, and get out to Kansas by Monday uh, evening. So practice at home for you before you hit the road Monday? Is yep, that the plan? Yep, yep. Go home, practice. and um, Will you go to Fog Allen for a little bit on Monday night just yeah, to get we'll a look? Be, we'll be there Monday night, just kind of smell the gym, and, and then uh, we got a late game Tuesday. and So a regular shoot-around day on Tuesday. Yep. Do yep. You, do you've, I mean, you've had these two early games last two days without shoot-arounds, and it, what's your cutoff for when you do a shoot-around and when you don't, depending on the tip time? Yeah, it, well, part of it is hard to get in the gym also because the other team's shooting around too. So when you get these tight tight windows, I think we could have had 6.30 to 7.30 a.m., and that just is not great for us, obviously. That's 5.30, 6.30. And while we get up that early for two days, we're trying to get our guys as much sleep as we can uh, this way. And, and it, it's just life on the road. It, it, it had no impact on this game. Um, you know, it's you know we had a uh, uh, – evening game against Baylor on Tuesday and, and started out 08. So, um, you know, I, 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 listen, I felt like our guys came and competed. They came and fought. We didn't play great uh, on either side of the ball. And, 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 you know, you can play well. Like, you can, you know, you can have an eight turnover game, 19 offensive rebound game, um, which, are, which are incredible stats in this league and lose. Um, there's a lot of leagues where if you put up numbers like that, you're not going to lose. But in this league, with with these teams, especially on the road, it gets hard. And so we just weren't good enough tonight to to win it. And and um, so we we got to move on and and uh, and learn as much as we can from this and and uh, figure some things out and go forward. I was I was proud of some of the guys. I thought. Uh, I thought Richie gave us a real uh, yep. boost coming in off the bench. I he thought, was our star of the game tonight. I thought Atiki Ali Atiki gave us a real boost uh, in the last several minutes of the game. I thought he really, really helped us. Um, you know, Jax gave us a boost early. The two fouls kind of slowed him down, but he was pretty good in the beginning of the game. I thought Spencer had a had a you know a really terrific effort. Um, and so, you know, we, we had uh, a bunch of guys come play. We just weren't quite good enough tonight. All right, Kansas will uh, host Texas here in a bit, and then we'll see how that one turns out before the uh, Jayhawks welcome BYU on Tuesday. Coach, we'll see you in Lawrence. Thanks, guys. All right, that is Mark Pope, and that will do it for today's BYU basketball broadcast. Final score, 84-74, K-State over BYU. Our thanks to the crew back at BYU Radio, our coordinating producer, Terry South, our studio host, Ben Bagley, our board operators, control board operators, James Finlayson and Seth Larson, Maya Tippett's, was on editor responsibilities in operations. We had Clark Jackman and Sean O'Neill. Our thanks to Coach Pope joining us pregame and postgame. To uh, Tom Gilbert, the communications director for K-State men's basketball, lining up Coach Eric Malagy for a pregame conversation. And as always, our right-hand man, BYU basketball communications director Tyson Jex, for helping us out in every possible way. So for all of those folks, just the guys on the headset, Mark, and we're going to be together again in Lawrence on Tuesday. You get me all to yourself this weekend, Greg. That's <laughs> rare. You're a lucky man, and uh, 
Listen, I, I, the Midwest has not been kind to the Cougars this year. I hope to, to change that Tuesday. I, that was been sp- circled on my calendar for a long time, and it'll be a fun yeah. opportunity. The Cougars' two road wins in this league were in the Eastern Time Zone and they're in Orlando and Morgantown, so looking to get some uh, good luck in the Midwest going. We'll do it uh, with you on a Tuesday from Lawrence, Kansas, BYU and the Jayhawks. Mark, uh, just quickly before uh, you drop off, uh, Fog Allen Fieldhouse, thoughts about being in the fog? Well, it's just one of those mythical places in college basketball, right? I've been to a Rupp Arena and, uh, you know, Freedom Hall and uh, have been out to North Carolina or Duke. And, uh, those you know, it's just one of those big names that you grow up with and you've watched on TV and have such a great history and championships and so many great players. So that's a, a little bit of a mecca for, for guys like us and for, I think, any college fan. So that, that'll be a nice opportunity to go there I've, like i said I, I've, I've been thinking about that one for a long time and i think it's a, just a, a wonderful opportunity for this team to bounce back and do something special yeah bucket list uh, item for both of us certainly it'll be a five o'clock mountain time pregame and a six o'clock tip tuesday in lawrence for byu and ku so that'll do it for mark durant my name is greg rubel saying in the meantime and in between time this has been byu basketball on the new skin byu sports network You've been listening to BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Coverage of today's game has been brought to you by All Pro Capital, Real Estate Investments, by Big O Tires. Stop by your locally owned and operated Big O Tires, the team you trust. Brought to you by Ken Garth, we hear you. And by Smith's Food and Drug, proud partner of BYU Athletics. BYU Basketball is a production of BYU Athletics in association with BYU Broadcasting. Special thanks to BYU President Shane Reese, Vice President Keith Vorkink, Athletic Director Tom Homo, and Associate Athletic Director of Corporate Sponsorships Casey Stoffer. BYU Basketball is an exclusive presentation of the new skin, BYU Sports Network.